Uh, good afternoon, it's uh, Thinking Slow Group. Uh, I wanted to do a quick video about uh, where we are in terms of the number of cases and hospital admissions that are coming from the partially or fully vaccinated. Um, and that's the headline figure there. The last uh, data set that came out from Public Health England a couple of days ago uh, is showing that nearly two thirds of the new Delta cases were from partially or fully vaccinated. And I think that number is not the kind of number you'd expect given the media coverage about uh, this being a pandemic of the unvaccinated and the unvaccinated are apparently causing all these problems, uh, which simply isn't true. So these are the actual numbers. And uh, at the end of this uh, short video, there's a link to the underlying data and I'll explain uh, what I've done. All, all I did was a little bit of mathematical uh, calculation, but the underlying data is all official from the government. So uh, this is not made up uh, conspiracy theory. These are real hard numbers, uh, which the government publishes. So kind of, uh, in a way, surprisingly now for the two week period ending the 29th of August, 62% uh, of the new Delta cases were partially or fully vaccinated. 54% uh, of accident and emergency visits were for partially or fully vaccinated people and 59% of those visits which ended up uh, with an overnight uh, inpatient stay were for partially or fully vaccinated. So, you know, to be fair, 78% um, uh, of the population has had a second dose uh, as of the end of August. So that would put those numbers into something of perspective. Uh, but the key thing here, I think everyone can see straight away that this is absolutely not a pandemic of the unvaccinated. And you're also getting the idea that sort of locking up uh, unvaccinated people who don't have access to vaccine passports is basically not going to do that much uh, in terms of disease spread and hospital admissions when the majority of those are coming from partially or fully vaccinated. So this is the um, dynamic development of the share of uh, new Delta cases that are coming from partially or fully vaccinated. And uh, inevitably, this would start at zero um, at the beginning of 2021, where we didn't have vaccination. And, you know, as vaccination has rolled out and other things have happened, the share of new Delta cases who are partially or fully vaccinated has gone up and that goes up to the 62% number that I mentioned on the slide before. So nearly two thirds, um, pretty significant really. And again, the idea that you're gonna lock up the unvaccinated and everything's gonna be fine is, is completely ridiculous to be honest and dishonest. Um, that's the same number again, but shown in terms of absolute numbers rather than the percentage and at the end there on the right hand side is the 62% number again. Uh, so case numbers are going up, uh, but the share of vaccinated, partially or fully vaccinated is, is going up as well and we're ending up at 62%. And I just want to add here, uh, when I say partially or fully vaccinated, it means what it says on the tin. These are people who have had one dose or two doses so we'll get into why that's important a little bit later but you know these again are facts um, and I'll show at the end how I got those facts but basically they're derived by comparing one Public Health England briefing with the one before and seeing what the movement was uh, between those two briefing documents. Uh, and here's the same data but it's this is for accident and emergency admissions uh, and this has been uh, translated into a weekly equivalent. So the the um, reports from Public Health England come out every two or four weeks. And I've just converted those numbers into weekly by dividing by two or four, depending on which, which the time period is. But again, uh, this is the 54% number that I was talking about on the right hand side, the blue uh, block, which is partially or fully vaccinated. So um, I didn't put the labeling on this one, but uh, I, th I think the main purpose of this chart is to show that there isn't really a night and day difference between the 
hospital admissions rate and the case fatality rate between the two groups of uh, vaccinated and unvaccinated. And I've left it a bit of a mystery. She can fill in in the comments about which is which. But uh, the, 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 the columns on the left are basically those accident and emergency figures, uh, the, the attendance divided by the total number of cases, which is running between 3.4 and 4.4%. Um, and then, of course, you get a much lower number uh, for those uh, A&E visits that end up with overnight stay and inpatient admission. So, I mean, roughly here, you can see about a third of those A&E visits end up as overnight uh, admissions. And there you're looking at about 1% of all the cases. Uh, and then the last one is the case fatality ratio, which is the number of deaths uh, over all time from February, actually, until the 29th of uh, August, divided by the number of cases. And you got these two numbers, 0 0.6 and 0 0.2. Um, it, um, thankfully, these numbers are much lower than the original uh, case fatality ratio numbers for the alpha variant. And in, and in some ways, that's uh, at least the discussion we had with Dr. Quinn that you could expect over time to get in, increased uh, infectiousness of, of the disease, but less uh, lower mortality, which at least based on this is, is happening. So these numbers are much, much lower than for alpha, uh, which was about 1%. So it's good to see this uh, number going down so much, basically. But I'm going to leave it as a bit of a mystery, uh, which group is which, basically. And if you want to put some uh, suggestions in the comments, uh, I'll try and answer those. So just wrapping up then, you know, we've, we've been through these actual numbers from the UK, which is uh, all official data. You know, how can it be that in England, roughly hospital admissions are 50-50? And in North America, we're bombarded on the news with this is all the unvaccinated, you know, 95% of hospital admissions or people in hospital are unvaccinated. Well, the answer is covered in a separate video here, which you can see it's in the channel. But basically, uh, in a nutshell, it's just because uh, in, in parts of North America, maybe everywhere in North America, but in Canada for certain, they've just basically decided to call anyone that's been hospitalized within 14 days of the first dose of vaccine is counted as unvaccinated. So you, roughly speaking, you take the 50% hospital admissions for unvaccinated, you take 50% which is vaccinated after the first dose and just basically call them unvaccinated as well. Roughly speaking, you then show these numbers saying, hey, look, it's uh, everybody in here is unvaccinated. Uh, it's a completely dishonest manipulation of the definitions. That's all it is. Uh, and it's covered in, in the video there. So, you know, I'm saying the UK numbers or the numbers for England 50 50 is, is probably an accurate number. And what you're seeing in Canada is manipulated by making this false definition. Uh, and then just wrapping up on. Um, on the vaccine. So we could see in the case fatality ratio and, and the hospitalization percentages, you, you didn't see that big a difference uh, in those numbers between the, the orange group and the blue group, which I hadn't labeled. Uh, but one thing is worth pointing out, and uh, there's an, also quite an interesting, in my view, film on this in our channel, which is that the number of patients you have now on mechanical ventilation, this data is for the UK. Uh, it's very, very much higher than it was uh, a year ago when we had no vaccination. If you take the same day in June, July, August, September, and compare, compare it to 2020 without vaccination, you know, you're somewhere four or five times higher uh, in 2021 after the, max, uh, after the rollout of mass vaccination. And that's the uh, same story you see in Canada. So th this is... Uh, a big question. Uh, remarkably, Professor Pagel from this uh, very deluded, I would say, independent sage uh, shows this chart as, as evidence about how effective the vaccines are. I, I really find that logic hard to deal with. But, um, you know, there's certainly questions around this chart. Why is this like this for the same disease, the same population? you'd expect uh, immunity to be going up over time and you wouldn't expect uh, to see a lot more people in hospital uh, in 2021 
uh, after the mass vaccination. But anyway, it's it's a fact. That's what it is, and it's uh, it's described in another film we've made here on the channel. So just wrapping up, then you know this is all official data. There's nothing made up. Uh, this is the link. Uh, you can you can see these uh, briefings, the variants of concern that come out every two weeks or four weeks, uh, depending on what's going on. And all I've done uh, is just a simple mathematical operation where you divide the position at uh, sorry you you deduct from the position here at 29th of August. Uh, you deduct what it was two weeks before that. So. You know, in this case, uh, it's 219,000 unvaccinated cases. I take away 180,000 cases. Uh, so I'm ending up at about 40,000 case increase in unvaccinated over that two week period, which will roughly translate into 20,000 cases per week on, on a weekly basis. So that's all I'm doing. And then I'm using that data to uh, create those uh, blue and orange charts over time and then the case fatality and the AE admissions are just calculated by taking a position at time so all uh, A&E admissions divided by all cases as of the 29th of August 2021 so anyone's welcome to look at this and check it it's uh, fully transparent where the numbers came from and that's it, really. Um, you know, I hope this gives you a, com well, I, I would imagine a completely different impression for those few people who are still unfortunate enough to be watching mainstream media. You know, they are just pushing talking points uh, of this being a pandemic of the uh, unvaccinated. And if we just lock up all the unvaccinated and exclude them from society, everything will be fine. Those talking points, like much of uh, what we hear in the mainstream media, have absolutely no basis in fact. I think you've seen that in this presentation. Uh, they're completely made up. Uh, they either don't look at the data or they just look at the data and lie about it, to be frank. Um, so, you know, this is what we covered in this presentation. Uh, you know, please follow us on Twitter, uh, subscribe to the channel, provide comments to try and answer as many comments as possible in this, uh, in this YouTube channel. And um, one of our sort of main points of doing all of this is that we early on understood that the a lot of data was being manipulated um, and you know we've tried to spend more than a year and a half now I guess uh, pointing that out and explaining what the actual numbers are if you look for them and present them objectively so hopefully you've enjoyed this um, I'm going to do another video about some of the political agendas behind why all this is going on. Uh, and if you hopefully you find that interesting as well, we'll put it up later. Okay, thank you very much. Goodbye.